till 27th of May. While I was living to 27th of May, Mr. Snyder President, I was commissioning, I was flagging off a project. This thing can be achieved if you are committed, if you have passion for the job. There are so many people who want to be minister, who want to be governor, for the sake that I was a governor, for the sake that I was a minister. But there are those who say, look, what do I want to offer? Am I committed to this job? And I thank Mr. President for nominating me. I believe, knowing how hungry Mr. President is to solving the problems of Nigeria, we have no choice but to give him that required support. And I can assure you, if I'm confirmed, if in ever, whatever capacity, Mr. President will not regret nominating me. Thank you and God bless you. Well, it's 63 days of President Bola Tinubu's administration and the Senate has commenced screening of his ministerial nominees, Wike, Badaru, Kiyari, Beta Edu, and many others have now been screened by the Red Chamber. The screening has witnessed moments of controversies over the timeline in the educational qualification of a nominee, subsisting court cases against a nominee, some instances of take a bow and go for former lawmakers, as well as some moments of frank questions. We want to know what you think about the ongoing screening of ministerial nominees at the Senate. Share your thoughts on Twitter right now using the hashtag first 100 days, tag at Tivisa News NG and at Nifemi Oguntoye. Thanks for joining us on the program. President Tinubu uh, is now set to address the nation. Uh, and that's where we're beginning from tonight in the nation's capital, where in the next one hour, the president is expected to address Nigerians. That's according to a special advisor on special duties, communications and strategy. The president is widely expected to address the outcry of Nigerians aftermath the removal of full subsidy and share federal government's intervention plan following uh, the widely reported Organized labels uh, nationwide protests expected to begin on West Day. Also, earlier today, President Tinubu officially decorated the newly appointed service chiefs with their new ranks, and this pivotal event formally marks the beginning of their tenure as the nation's topmost defense officers. The ceremony, which held inside the council chambers of the presidential villa, was witnessed by the vice president, Senator Kashim Shatima, top government officials as well as family members of the officers. The service chiefs whose appointments were initially declared on the 19th of June have been screened by the National Assembly and having successfully completed this legislative scrutiny, they now take up their roles as the chief architects of Nigeria's defense and security strategies. State House correspondent Femi Akonde has been following that particular development. He joins me live from the presidential villa. Femi, the service chiefs were officially decorated today at the State House. No doubt they now have their work cut out for them, right? Yes, indeed, Nifemi, they have been decorated. It's now for them to go out and execute Mr. President's charge to secure the country, to secure lives and property, to tackle all emerging security threats and also ensure that their strategy uh, continues to, uh, to evolve. Their strategy to tackle the security challenges uh, remains dynamic and in tandem with the changing conventions in uh, security globally. Well, if I mean, you know, the president also asked these uh, service chiefs to work together to um, improve in their synergy, uh, especially among uh, the uh, security agencies. He says in the in recent past, there has been quite an improvement in uh, the security situation on uh, in the country. But the president said this is particularly because of the steadfastness commitment and dedication of the service chiefs. He thanked them for their service to the country, thanked their families for uh, tolerating um, the service chiefs, for allowing them um, also contribute to uh, the country, contribute to protecting the country, defending its uh, territorial integrity. And he says that, well, whatever these uh, security agencies need to keep the country safe, the, he, will, he, as president and commander-in-chief, will provide. Because you recall that uh, in his inaugural speech, he says security will be a priority of his administration. And the service chiefs, on their part, pledged 100% loyalty to their commander-in-chief. Nifemi.
The president is set to address the nation at seven. Uh, perhaps the last time we heard from him in a nationwide broadcast was on Democracy Day. Expectations are in top gear as to federal government's intervention after the removal of full subsidy. Uh, talk to us about what to expect um, in this speech. If we believe the president will be explaining to Nigerians uh, the intention behind most of the policies his administration has introduced since uh, he assumed office on the 29th of May, especially the removal of uh, fuel subsidy. We have seen how this has uh, disrupted the national life. Different sectors of the country have been affected by just um, the impact of the removal of petrol subsidy. We know that um, palliatives have already been rolled out through the national Economic Council mandating state governments to drive the process. That is ongoing. But we are also uh, we also believe that President Bola Tinubu will want to at least touch base with uh, Nigerians, the people that elected him. He owes Nigerians that to at least always communicate government plans and policies, talk to Nigerians, feel their pulse, and in some cases also uh, react to some of the uh, the things the. Uh, demands that Nigerians are making. The biggest um, thing for this administration is the removal of petrol subsidy and how they would ensure that they reduce the hardship it has uh, caused for so many Nigerians. So all is work in progress. We'll wait until 7 p.m. to see uh, what President Bola Tenebo will say and also point the country in the direction it will take moving forward. Nifemi. I mean, you covered the ECOWAS extraordinary meeting in Abuja yesterday and the resolutions on the coup d'etat situation in EJ. What do you think the community is doing differently under the Tinubu chairmanship? Uh, because just last year, there was another coup in Burkina Faso and nothing has changed despite ECOWAS's um, strong condemnation of it. Well, if I'm on that, President Bola Tinobu's leadership of ECOWAS, we are seeing stiffer sanctions uh, imposed on countries who are experiencing military takeovers with the latest being Niger Republic. And of course, that is the first under the leadership of President Bola Tinobu. You know, he had already said earlier that ECOWAS uh, should uh, be resolute. ECOWAS should no longer uh, lay back. ECOWAS should develop and become uh, well, like a dog that not only barks but bites. And we are beginning to see the manifestation of that um, under his leadership. The sanctions imposed on on uh, Nigeria Republic are very tough sanctions. We expect that uh, in the coming weeks, this pr uh, sanction will, in the coming days, this sanction will also pile pressure on the uh, military governments in Nigeria Republic and force them to open their doors to talk to uh, ECOWAS, to President Bola Tinubu, to also negotiate. But what President Bola Tinubu is saying is that, well, for ECOWAS, ECOWAS stance is that democracy, democratic governance must be restored in Nigeria Republic and also the democratically elected president who will be the only one recognized by ECOWAS, that's Mohammed Bazoum, should be released with immediate effect. He is also putting on the table an option of um, the use of force, a military option, if that ultimatum given by ECOWAS expires and the uh, military government in the Nigeria Republic, the coup plotters in the Nigeria Republic, are still hanging on to power, then ECOWAS will be left with no other option than to uh, use force. We do not know how they intend to do that, if they will put boots on the ground or what strategy they will take to uh, uh, enforce that use of force that will push out uh, the coup plotters. That we do not know. We hear that uh, they are keeping that under wraps. That is a security and military strategy, but that is on the table. And other options are being exposed explored also by ECOWAS under the leadership of our President Bola Tinubu. Nifemi. Absolutely. There are also other resolutions that engage in posing no-flight zone on the J and ordering relevant authorities to free uh, to freeze the uh, uh, the financial ordering financial institutions to freeze the assets of Niger in other countries. Nigerians are concerned about the involvement, the extent of involvement of Nigeria uh, as it plays the big brother role in the sub-region, particularly when you also pay attention to the economic crisis back at home, Femi. Well, Nigeria is a very big financier of ECOWAS. Nigeria is the biggest economy also in ECOWAS and indeed in Africa. So Nigeria always has to be at the front, lead from the front. 
play that big brother role. And, well, Nigeria is also particularly concerned about the impact of uh, instability, political instability in Nigeria Republic, because Nigeria shares our borders with Nigeria Republic on the northwest uh, fringes of the country. And they are concerned about the influx of refugees, people fleeing the hardship or conflict or the flee the situation in Nigeria Republic would naturally move down to Nigeria. All right, in Nigeria, we have uh, a great number of refugees and of people coming in from Nigeria Republic. A lot of them are undocumented. And you know, Nigeria is also grappling with its own security challenges. So whatever happens in Nigeria will have a ripple effect in Nigeria. And that is why Nigeria has to really play uh, that lead role, lead from the front, show that um, big brother role this time around in ECOWAS. President Bola Tinubu understands all of that, and that is why he is talking tough, if any. Amir Kondi, sit-house correspondent live for us at the presidential villa, Abuja.